Welcome back to Softcore History. I'm your host for the week, Dan Jester, and I am joined, as always, by Rob Fox and Jake Goldman. What is up, boys? Hey. You know, <laughs> just fucking around. Having a blast. I don't know. Nothing. I went out to dinner. I had, like, four drinks at dinner. My in-laws are in town, so it's, like, on them. So it's... It's on them. Oh, the, the I thought you having four drinks was on them. That is on them, too, because <laughs> yeah. it's on them. It's, yeah. it's on them because it's on them. I get it. Yeah. If they pay and I drinking. Yeah. yeah. You didn't want to play credit card roulette with the in-laws? It's a dumb <laughs> thing. <laughs> no. Put your I know card this in is half. free, but I yeah. just kind of want to big dick you guys. Oh, God. I wonder up. when that'll happen, because they're, like, my parents, like, my dad's over 70. Like, he's, like, 71, right? I'm 37. Like, I'm an adult. I'm an adult, man. I don't feel like it because this is my job, and I just feel like our generation is fucking stupid as shit about growing up. Like, someone's making a Barney movie, and they're like, but it's for adults. It's the most pathetic thing I've ever heard. But, like, now, even now, I'm like, shouldn't I be paying for them? Like, I feel like when my dad was 37, he was paying for my grandfather's dinner. Oh, man. My dad and my grandfather fight at, like, public restaurants about who gets the bill. Really? Yeah. The, oh, it's a whole thing. See, by the time my uncle, actually, not even my dad. My, uh, by the time, my, like, my uncles were 37, because my uncles were all, like, very wealthy. My dad was an idiot and decided to work for the government. Yeah. And not be a private lawyer. And mm. let me drive a BMW to school and just be a piece of shit. Yeah. Like, I could have been such a prolific piece of shit. Could have been. Could have been. been. Could have been a contender. You know what's worse than a prolific piece of shit? I could have been a prolific <laughs> piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well. There are women out there that think you should, when you first meet their friends, their entire friend group, cover the bill. For the whole friend group? For the whole group. What? Where? When did this start? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> like, it wasn't when I was dating. Everyone's <laughs> putting on a uterus hat when they want an abortion, but as soon as you meet their friend group, it's drop the credit card, asshole. Man, it's, it's tough out on these streets. Yeah. How many times does you that pay, happen to you? You paying for bachelorette parties now, I'm not man? paying for anything, no. <laughs> no, no. I, I avoid these people. But, I mean, you ask Giorgio, you ask some of these guys out here. In your 30s, mid to early 30s, women just expect a lot more out of you. Yeah, and typically it's just financial attractiveness. Yeah. Yeah, they it's, need you to peacock. It's mostly that. Yeah. They, need I mean, you to, they need you to financially peacock. Yeah. Flaunt. And when you're showing up in a truck that's been... <laughs> It's been <laughs> abused. I'm it's just a- tired of fixing it, Rob. It's I know. not that I don't want to fix it. It's every time I fix it, I get hit again when how, I'm not in the vehicle. How quickly in the conversation do you have to explain to a woman that you're not poor, your truck's just been broken into and hit so many times that like never through a fault of your own. I'm beaten down. That you just can't you just don't want to deal with it anymore. You're like it's paid off. It's get a, a car is a, always a diminishing investment. I just don't want to do it anymore. Perhaps not these days. Yeah. But how how, how quickly do you have to explain to a woman that you... Uh, the first five minutes I pull up, right? But then she's like, okay, well, but my feet are still only touching discarded water bottle. The floor of your car is... It's covered It's in, not visible. It's covered in uh, protein. <laughs> <laughs> he just opens the door and it goes... And you're like, yeah, no, nah, one of the fuckers that broke in here just dumped a... Dumped a bunch of trash. <laughs> I didn't do it. It's a real dick. <laughs> Dude, the <laughs> one time my car shit. got, like, fucked around in, they left trash everywhere. It was my trash, but, like, yeah. they they just put it all in the seat. And I was like, are they telling me I need to clean my car? I try to use it as almost a deterrent for these people to break into my car. I they're like, oh, look at all this trash in the front seat. I've told you time and again, none of that matters. It's broken window theory. The only thing that matters is that you drive a car, a truck, a, p- a big pickup truck, that looks like there's a gun in it. Yeah. They're I'm looking like, for a gun every time. Every time. Yeah, every they time. just want the gun. And they're disappointed every time. So they smash the window. Like, fuck! Even when I leave it unlocked, they're just like, <laughs> nope. <laughs> Get a gun, dickhole! <laughs> yeah, all it frustration. Here. Yeah. yeah, they do that at the end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, they open the door and then break the window when they're leaving. Yep. So... That's my complex. It doesn't matter where I move either. I've it's I've truly. moved nine times since I've been in Austin. Every time I move, I go get my window broken. It's like how like sometimes when people live in a haunted house, like the ghost will latch onto them. There's a poltergeist oh, following it, it me. Follows them, it follows. Yeah. yeah, it's following you. You know how like uh, rooms haunted rooms are colder. Mm-hmm. 
you think like you can just haunt a room because your AC bill's so bad? <laughs> it's, like, I gotta get, it's so fucking hot, man. Open a portal. Ha- I need to haunt a couple rooms. That's dude. the most like millennial headline I've ever heard. Like millennials turning to the underworld <laughs> for, for <laughs> air conditioning <laughs> for more efficient energy bills. Yeah. <laughs> That could be like a climate change thing too. That, that's absolutely like a Business Insider story. Yeah. No, dude, I'm gonna start that up. I'm gonna haunt people's houses. <laughs> so I brought this terrified man. We're gonna murder him here. His soul will be ripped from his yeah. body before he can ascend. That'll be like a left wing talking point one day where they're like, "All right, we're gonna try to conserve some energy. No AC for uh, Sunday, Wednesday. Instead, here's a Ouija board. Yeah, right. Summon something, make it. But chilly. Be, then you gotta be like, okay, but does that mean you? think that heaven and hell exists and explicitly now kind of believe in the christian god they're like well no uh, 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 listen uh, pal uh, 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 ghosts aren't christian like (laughs) ip no ghosts aren't necessarily neither is the underworld this is all a western situation no it's not the you don't think there's any eastern ghost there's, There's no the Chinese East. ghost. The way they're going to be summoning them is very much through the, the Judeo-Christian lens. You the think way the Ouija board is Judeo-Christian? I think it they're is. Not an, religious, they're not religious. They're spiritual. It's by Milton okay. Bradley. It's not even a real thing. Milton Bradley? Yeah. That, sound, that sounds like uh, an Anglican. He's Episcopalian. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, that guy's Christian. But Light it's not like he's like Scott from the Bible made it a board game. I'm just telling you. They're going to be like, yeah, we got him from hell. Hell? What? Where's hell from? So between my car constantly taking some punishment and my wallet taking some punishment with my gambling addiction, I've uh, I told you guys this off air. Started an OnlyFans. An He's only not dance. lying. He's not lying. Uh, only we're, dance. We're working out the kinks, getting the verification going. <laughs> working out the kinks. What kinks? Just yeah. start taking your penis out. Well, that's easy, yes. He's got to dress it up, though. <laughs> but I got to... Get confirmed and make sure you know I get paid and everything. You should. I still got to sit up the uh, the tears, but follow me. We just go back to my previous at Damagester no. R E G E S T E R on OnlyFans. Let me, let me go back. Let me just keep. I, I'm not even. I'm. Not, I don't even remember the last time I've been to church. Like probably a, a couple Christmases ago. I want to go back. Me and wife do the same. We want to go back, and we will eventually. But like, you might need to go to church. <laughs> You definitely need to just find a wife, and you might need to go to church first to just find an a even, like, semi-normal human, because they ain't on the apps. And you're not finding it at whatever, going to Lil Woodrow's on Saturday watching UFC fights. I don't know what you find there, but it's led you to this. It's not women. What is the hobby? I was to say, that's, fight night's dudes. Fight night is only dudes that want to fight you. Let, yeah. me, let me just, like, literally, like, all I can think of is Javier Bardem being like, if the path you've taken has led you to this, what was the youth of the path? Yeah. I'm aware. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I want to re re circle back to the uh the only dance. Um what you got any you coming out <laughs> strong from the gate here? What are you gonna do? I don't know. I gotta I gotta talk to uh the woman that's currently living with me. <laughs> There's a woman living with you. <laughs> She paying rent? She's not. Uh, so my friend is uh, living with me for the month until because there's a gap between her last leave. You have a homeless woman homeless. living with you. <laughs> she's le- she's technically homeless by all all metrics. Like Te- that is she how she's literally homeless. Yeah, yes. that is how you would define homeless. So like it, it's not a lie. Like it's technically correct to say you are sheltering a homeless woman. Correct. And now is I'm sorry. Where does your OnlyFans come in on this? You've taken in a homeless woman. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You've started an OnlyFans. Yeah, yeah. You you brought the homelessness part. A into plus this. B, yeah. A plus B. I, where is what's what's the C? I mean, we've discussed well, d- potential content collaboration. <laughs> so you fuck a homeless person on camera. If you fuck her before she finds a new apartment, you're fucking a homeless person on camera for money. I want you to know that you are technically fucking a homeless person. It also ties into today's episode uh, <laughs> because it's she's actually related. To the person I'm going to talk to today. It's like bum fights. It's bum fucks. That's not new. That's a thing, actually. We looked that up on a show a while back Wait, on no, TV. What? Yeah, there's uh, like, there's, there's like if homeless you porn it, is it bad. I know. I know. Where he's just like, hey, I'll pay you to suck my dick. Or like, take your dick out. I'll pay $20 to take your dick out. And like, some person's like, that's exploitive. That's exploitation. What, you never fucked on camera before? Um, I have, but not pub- I didn't publish it. 
Yeah. You're too ashamed? Uh, no, it was exactly what you'd expect. Yeah. <laughs> Low production I know quality. How you fuck. <laughs> I don't have to see it. <laughs> just Rob's butt. It was just a Hank Hill ass. Rob's butt moving up and down. <laughs> it's not. Yeah, it's pretty Hank Hill. Both of my kids, my wife, because my wife has like a pretty good butt. But my my kids, uh, I'm not even a butt guy. But but like you wouldn't be. I'm not. I'm an ass man through and through. I'm not an ass man. I'm tits, and and stomach. Those are the two things I like. Uh, but anyway, what like a flat tummy? I yeah, I get it. It's just like no one ever like calls that one out. Yeah, like a like, good core, maybe abs. Yeah, a little bit thin. I like thin girls. <laughs> Oops. I like thin. Like yeah, thin girls with boobs. Yeah. I'm All not. Right. I'm gonna. I've I'm just gonna, never heard anyone go. I have stomach. I'm. Stomach I'm gonna. Guy. I'm gonna fucking explode at Barbie. That's <laughs> All right. I am gonna. You're, you're gonna Oppenheimer an, in Barbie. Yeah. <laughs> All in one. Now to Margo or to Ryan Gosling? Yes. Whatever. Both. Doesn't yeah. matter. Who cares? Yes. It's not gay. The answer is yes. What is gay? There's nothing gay about coming to Ryan Gosling. No, not no. even close. Not at all. At some point, I've said this about like the the ultimate example is Brad Pitt and Meet Joe Black, where it's just like, oh. you're not a person. Like, you're not a human being. You are some sort of angel. And there's no, like, you're a different species. Also, if you cut off half my face, I'm Ryan Gosling. Just nose up. You can check us out on YouTube if you're listening at home. Yeah, you know, I'd love a listener to just do that. Take that screenshot and then find Ryan Gosling. And let's compare. Yeah, do it. Do it, fans. I'd do lo- your worst. I'd love to see it. But Scrub out the back. Be like, which is which? Can't tell. <laughs> Can't tell. Same picture. Back to my original point, though. Today... We're actually going to talk about a man who is related to the woman that is currently in my house. Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. So whatever uh, historical significance he had, it certainly didn't translate financially. Well, you can be related to someone that's way more affluent than you. Well, check it out. (laughs) He was a outlaw in the Wild West. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Specifically Texas. Sweet. Uh, yeah. Love that. Yeah. So today we're going to talk about John Wesley Harden. Hmm. Notorious outlaw, gunfighter. Never heard of this guy. Was yeah. a lawyer at one point. All right. What? Uh, what? What's his years of operation? So he was born in 53? 19? 18. Okay. 1853. All right, so he's fucking around 70s, 80s. And, uh, yeah, he was around until 1895. But wasn't a Confederate. Was too young to be a Confederate? No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, there's no such thing as too young to be on a battlefield before 1900. No, no, no. Uh, check it out. Actually, no. we'll just get to that point. In <laughs> 1862, at age nine, he tried to run away from home to join the Confederate Army at nine. That boy really didn't like black people. <laughs> yeah. He just really wanted to shoot. Yeah. Yeah. Like, all right, hold on, son. We can't give you a musket. But if you'd like to play a drum while the cannons shoot at you, more than welcome. It's such a bad gig. It's the worst possible gig. Yeah. I play my drum for you. A drum or a flute. <laughs> like, imagine, imagine. remember how much you hated learning recorder in, in, in like, sixth grade? We didn't have the yeah, budget for that. that. What? We didn't I, have the budget for that. Oh, okay. Oh, I went to a nice private school. I... Also went to private school. Yeah, we went to one with like a normal, like smart education, though not that Bible dribble you had. <laughs> Our teachers had to pay out of pocket for supplies. Yikes! Not ideal. Yeah, I never had to play recorder. Though. It's a lot of teachers, though, including the woman that's living in my house right now. I figured it was her. Yeah, <laughs> I figured it was the public school teacher. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I also went to this. Uh, you, you'll recall a couple episodes back, a couple months back, the sex club. Yeah, sex club. Oh, it all makes sense. It's all coming together. Look, there's no one who deserves to be homeless more than a gainfully employed public school teacher. (laughs) Yeah, it's... So fucked. Well, it's not because she's like poor. It's a lease cap, dude. It's a lease cap, but it is also, uh, you know, that we don't pay our teachers. No, we don't. They're not paid near enough. Right. And then people, like, also, every parent just wants to murder every fucking public school teacher, too. Because it's like, it's never my kid's fault, and you're teaching them Satan. Dude, uh, I guess. Yeah. The funniest thing about anything with bitching about kids is where I'm like, 
what? Oh, uh, someone's trying to turn him gay or someone's going to murder them with an AR-15. Uh, I don't think either of those things going to happen, but what is happening is that I pay 17 grand a year for daycare. So can someone fix that? I don't care about some fucking guy in a dress or some fucking psycho with a fucking rifle because that's probably not going to happen. What's going to happen is I'm going to cut another fat check every fucking month. You had kids, dude. Get over it. <laughs> that's the best argument. Always. It's like you didn't have, to have, didn't have to have kids. Didn't have to. That's your own tax. Yeah. Which is the meanest. <laughs> it's the meanest argument to parents. <laughs> but it's, Suck it, bitch. Yeah. You chose that. Yeah. Maybe. Trying to continue the species. You think you're better than now, us? I technically didn't. You think you have the genetics that are worthy to pass on? I mean, maybe. I, only one of my kids didn't didn't take. But that was that was Courtney's fault. That was an extra right. topic. Right. My cum was too strong. I fired poison. <laughs> I almost murder every woman I impregnate. That's not good. Not intentionally. I mean, yeah, I'm sure it's not. This was insane. The if you had a kill switch in your ass, that you're like, oh, okay, firing the dirty load today. It's all dirty loads. <laughs> God, gross. Yeah. So Hardin, born in 1853 near Bonham, Texas, to James Gibson Gip Hardin, a Methodist preacher, and Mary Elizabeth Dixon. He was named after John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist Christian Church. Wait, the founder of Methodism? Mm-hmm. The most boring religion on earth. So this person that's in your house is related to this the founder outlaw who's no, no, related no. to you. No, no, the outlaw is named after. Oh, named after. Named I'm sorry, after, yeah. not oh, okay, related okay. to. I was going to say, imagine you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my grandpa is the Pope. I'm poor. Like, Doesn't happen. What? I mean, there's some poor Vanderbilts out there. Are there? Yeah. Yeah. Not everyone's Anderson Cooper. Not everyone. I but mean, there is a lot of like it's a, that is a normal thing in like uh, history where noble families will essentially just like, you know, their portfolio takes a shit and they ain't got no more money. I think that's the whole plot of uh, sent what what, what Pride and Prejudice. No so it's like a noble family, but they're dog shit now. Yeah, but they still get the house. Right, right. They're just they pouring a, they still pouring the land on the property, but they yeah. have, they're not liquid at all. Yeah, they're pouring a mansion. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Hardin's dad was a preacher, also a teacher, and established a school that Hardin would go to. Uh, while attending his father's school, Hardin was taunted by another student. He responded by stabbing his fellow classmate in the abdomen. Yeah, I assumed he killed him. Because Almost killing him. And uh, Hardin, this was a funny point they, they had in the, the text, nearly expelled over the incident. Nearly. Well, he knew a guy. Well, he nearly killed him. I'm sure your current um, squatter knows quite a bit about kids almost getting expelled for stabbing someone. But again, this is a school his father started. Yeah. It helps when daddy runs the school. Yeah. Fair so, enough. I mean, do you remember? Very tell, early on, he uh, he had a bloodthirst. Did I ever tell you about our, our friend? Uh, this is something that would have probably gotten me expelled from private school, but our friend, uh, I won't mention the name this time, but his wife's a teacher and worked at a public school. And when she was pregnant, it was like during COVID, she had to like enforce mask rules or whatever. Like it was just the school policy. She fucking had to do it. Some kid was running around without a mask on or whatever. Mm-hmm. And she was like, hey, put your mask back on, please. Uh, not even like a bitch about it, right? Like, it was just like, hey, uh, you know, put your mask on, please. And he <laughs> could just turn her and goes, bitch, don't tell me what to do. I'll murder you and your baby. Jesus. Yeah, you ever see the video? And, and anyway, the kid didn't get in trouble. What? Like, right. she took the kid to the principal, and she do? was like, oh, he was just expressing himself. Okay. And she asked our friend, she was like, what should I do? And he was like, leave there and never come back. I make enough money. We'll just yeah. find a new school. Right. Do you yeah. remember a couple months back the video of that, like, giant kid who beat the fuck out of a female teacher? For because, taking his phone? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't see it was that either one. either his phone or, like, a uh, like a, a Game Boy or Something whatever the like current that. version of the it Game Boy. It certainly yeah. wasn't a Game Boy. <laughs> yeah. Um, He's like, bitch, that's worth $3,000. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, maybe at that point you, you, you do it. Um, yeah, I saw one where a kid tased his teacher for taking his phone, too. He just had a taser? He had a taser, yeah. Sick. See, this is why we need metal detectors in schools. That's a great Colin Quinn joke. I send my kids to Catholic school because at <laughs> public school, the kids hit the teachers, but at Catholic school, the teachers hit the kids. Yeah. So. I don't. I think I'm okay with that. That's the right dichotomy. Yeah. It's the right relationship. If there's going to be hitting involved, 
You're not going to be able to teach anything if the people you're trying to teach are the ones hitting you. There's an old expression uh, of inmates running an asylum. Right, yeah, yeah right. right. It's like, eh, you have to be here. I saw a photo of inmates eating pizza, and I think the caption was just like, jail tries to uh, ease over tension the same way work does. Yeah, it's a nice morale booster. Yeah, you're like, all right, Bloods, Crips, Muslim Brotherhood, white nationalists. Dominoes. Yeah, here's some pizza. I mean, pizza to them would probably be like, I don't even know what to me, like Wagyu and caviar. Oh, compared to prison food? Yeah. Yeah. More of a morale booster than just like a Friday, like, oh, yeah. instead of bonuses, we're having a pizza party. We don't like have a- to eat the maggot mash. Yeah. They did the mash. The maggot mash. In November 1868, when he was 15, Hardin challenged his uncle, uh, his uncle's former slave, to a to a wrestling match, which Hardin won. According to Hardin, the following day, Maggi ambushed him as he rode past, shouting at him and waving a stick. Hardin drew a revolver and shot Maggi five times. So you might have been on to something about him hating black guys. Well, yeah, he's a white guy in Texas in 1850, in the 1850s, 1860s. That wanted to join the Confederacy when he was nine. So this was his first recorded kill at age 15. Now, the only person to tell that story was the living one. Who killed him. Yeah. So, A, I have so many questions with that situation alone. A, what is a former slave still doing hanging around there? It's not like you can just get, pack up and go. Get the fuck out of de- you could. Yeah, I, it doesn't matter at that point. Just palling around. Refugees can't pack up and go, but they do. They pack up and they go. You get the fuck out of Dodge. Um, B, oh, well, actually, I understand why he had. I don't know if the, the black dude wanted to wrestle the uh, outlaw. But I assume he didn't have much the of a child. choice he's, once he's, challenged. Again, he was 15 at this point. Yeah. He, yeah. And uh, anyway, this guy wasn't attacked. He he killed that guy. Yeah. Maybe I, they argued and they and they got really mad at each other. Maybe maybe he didn't no maybe no one started it, but like he did, definitely wasn't attacked. Yeah, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say he was just like digging a hole or something. He's like, oh my god, he has a stick. He killed him. <laughs> I mean, it could have been they, they ambushed. Were, it could have been they were like, "Hey, I beat you yesterday, haha!" And the guy was like, "You know what? Fuck you." Yeah. You know, like, like understandably, like, "Fuck you." And he's like, "Hey, you know what? Fuck you. I beat you." He's like, "No, you didn't beat me. I was just fucking black, and I can't fucking pin your ass." Yeah, I, or else I I'll be, be murdered. I could yeah. beat your ass. They're like, no, you can't. I already beat you, and then just get heated, and the, you know what I mean? Like, maybe it was like that. Yeah. But yeah. I don't think the guy just jumped out and was like, <laughs> ah. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. Shoots him, rides off. Uh, Meiji dies three days later. Hardin goes into hiding because he believes he would not get a fair hearing as he's in the Union-occupied side of the state. Oh. Uh, Hardin claimed that authorities eventually discovered his location and three Union soldiers were sent to arrest him, at which time he chose to confront his pursuers despite having been warned of their approach by an older brother, Joseph. And, yeah, he uh, just fucking starts firing on him, kills all three. So he starts blasting. (laughs) He just starts blasting. (laughs) He kills three fucking soldiers. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, what are these guys doing? Probably not anticipating a gun-crazy 15-year-old. Although I will say this. If they're only armed with muskets, basically, and he has a revolver? He had a double-barrel shotgun. And Not a revolver and a knife, and he's six shooter. So oh, he was he back was and he was yeah. so he was literally he had quite a bit more firepower than them. Yeah. Oh, so he kill he ends up killing four men. What? Three, yeah. and then I guess someone else. Someone else shows uh, up. A bystander. Like, <laughs> I and heard then, you uh, killed three soldiers. He's <laughs> wounded in the arm in the exchange, though. Uh, he I takes so. one. He takes Good one. Good lord. But this is him at fifteen. These are the worst this soldiers is, on earth. These are the origin stories of an outlaw. All right. Uh, Hardin knew that he would be arrested if he returned home. As a fugitive, he initially traveled with outlaw Frank Polk. Uh, Polk had killed a man named Tom Brady. Oh, no. Love that. Yeah. And a detachment uh, soldier sent from Corsicana, Texas, were pursuing the duo. Hardin escaped, but the soldiers apprehended Polk and jailed him temporarily. Hardin also claimed that he and his cousin, Simp Dixon, Encountered a group of soldiers and each killed a man. 
On January 5th, 1870, Hardin was playing cards with Benjamin Bradley in Tawash Hill County, Texas. Hardin was winning almost every hand, which angered Bradley, who threatened to cut out Hardin's liver if he won again. Sounds Did he like know where it was? Yeah. Bradley drew. Was he, was he just going to chop in there and figure it pull out? around until he was like, well, that's the heart, of course. Yeah, you ask questions later. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Looks like a, uh, this is the liver. Oh, wait, there's another one. It's just like, we, there's one liver, right? This must be a, a kidney. I don't know. A lung. I would just pull out anything. He's I don't even think a liver is the coolest thing to pull out. I think lungs. Lungs would be, that's metal. The lungs out the back, and you do the, uh, the Viking the dragon. The blood, no, it's the blood eagle. Blood eagle, yeah. That's, that is absolutely the way to go. Mm-hmm. It's, well, not if it's happened to you. Livers, I don't know why people are so obsessed with the liver. It goes, that goes all the way back through history. You can it's like it. a Greek story where, like, every night, a crow eats some guy's liver out. Like the gods punished him that way. Oh, yeah. Like the liver? What? I just, just They just loved booze. I wonder if liver somehow. is like... Oh, they probably didn't even know what it did. It, no, of course yeah. they didn't know what it did. It's probably just like they assumed that was important, like really important. Maybe liver is just like a term for organ. Oh, it could be. Yeah, like it's just like liver. It's a liver. You know, like... Right. Or like viscera is just things inside you. Yeah, liver yeah. could be organ. Uh. So I don't know. That's one. a guess. I have no idea. I'm I'm taking it. Yeah. Face value. So Harden wins another hand. Bradley draws his knife and six shooter. Harden said he was unarmed and excused himself, but claimed later that night Bradley came looking for him. Right. <laughs> so the guy pulls a knife and a gun. He's like, whoa, and whoa. And he's like, it's fucking time to die. And he's just like, well, hold on a minute. Now I'm not armed. I'm going to go to the restroom. <laughs> Fair. Like, I. <laughs> It's giving you time for you to piss, but fine. Take your pee, sir. <laughs> yeah, so he bails and eventually finds Bradley out again, allegedly looking for him. So uh, Hardin drew his pistol and returned a shot right at him, striking him in the head and another in the chest. So he kills Bradley. Mm. That'll do it. That guy deserved to die, to be honest. Yeah, stop going and He looking was mad for at it. kill the dealer if you're going to kill anyone. Yeah. He's not doing it. Or is this like a type of game where everybody takes turns dealing? It's probably know. that. In it's, which case. It's probably a game of poker. Especially suck my dick on that one. Yeah. Like what? Deal you just dealt hand. me that hand, bitch. What are yeah. you talking about? I mean, I'm guessing there's accusations of cheating. I, I would cards. be like, what are you? Where? Where are they? Yeah. Sir, if you're not cheating, if you are cheating, of course, you just be like, how dare you? No, I will not let you accost me. Dozens of people saw him shoot Bradley down in cold blood. And from then on, a good record of how Hardin used his guns uh, was kind of documented. His holsters were sewn into his vest so that the butt of the pistols pointed inward across his chest. He crossed his arms to draw. Hardin claimed this was the fastest way to draw, and he practiced every day. A man called Judge Moore, who held Hardin's stakes of money in a pistol, refused to give them up without Bradley's consent and later vanished. So uh, anybody that would have, like, corroborated that what happened with Bradley earlier, he just kind of went missing. No. Huh. 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 Mm. You know what the fastest way to draw is? You wait. Right? You wait for the other person to draw if you want to be the fastest. Why? Because the reflex to draw is faster than the instinct to draw, like the the decision. So, like, you make moves, kinetic movement, faster in reaction than you do in No, that makes total decision. sense. That's, I'm, a, I'm a much better uh, in softball and baseball, much better infielder than outfielder. Hmm. Because as, you, as I sit there under the ball or I see even the ball, like a base hit coming at me, like, but I'm in the outfield and I got to pick it up and play it. Much worse at doing that than just, like, the reaction. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah, yep. Yeah. 100%. Right. Yeah. After killing Bradley, uh, Harding claimed that he was, that when a posse of 15 men came after him, he captured two of them and took a shotgun, two six-shooters, a rifle, and uh, then ordered two men to join the members of the posse at Jim Page's and wait for them to come along. What happened to the other 13? What? He captured two? By himself? A lot of this is documented in his autobiography. Oh, yeah, all right. Well, that... So they could uh, potentially be straight-up lies. It could be like a Jack Reacher situation where he's like... Where they're, that one fight where they're like, 
what are you gonna do, man? It's six on one. And he's like, no, it's three on one. Because I'm gonna fuck him up. I'm gonna fuck him up. And then this guy is gonna be like, I guess I'll come in and I'll fuck him up. And then you three are just gonna run away. Cool. And then Tom Cruise does exactly that. Yeah. January. I, like, I related to that. Yeah, January twentieth, uh, same year. He claimed to kill a man in a gunfight after an argument at the circus. How many murders is this guy admitting to in his autobiography? Uh, somewhere between forty-two and fifty. Yeah, like, jeez, it's so many killed. It's like mind comp. It's like, and then I was in Vienna and I strangled five Jew children. They were mean to me, and I did it. Yeah, a lot of these are just kind of footnotes. It's like, oh, I would love to hear the argument at the circus. I, yeah. What? You were just, it's like one, you're like, yeah, I was at the circus and this guy's a dick. I killed him. It sounds like a <laughs> Phillies fan. It's like, yeah, yeah I was at a Phillies game and that's fucking, so I, the little bitch was yelling at me in the bathroom. I smashed his face in the urinal. He's dead. Uh, I cut his tires and brake line in the parking lot. Less than a week after this incident with the circus, Hardin was with a prostitute when he was confronted by her pimp who demanded money. Oh, so the business wanted to be paid for the services that they rendered? Big mistake. Imagine just being like, and then, check this shit out. So I'm at this McDonald's, right? I order a hamburger, and I'm fucking eating this hamburger that I fucking ordered, and this motherfucker comes up to me, and he's like, that's $5. That hamburger cost $5. It's too much sass. I fucking killed him. Yeah, see... Well, no, no. Here's what he does first. Okay. He does give him the money. Okay. He, he throws it at his feet. So mm. as the pimp goes to pick up the money, he executes him. That's worse. That's yeah. so much worse That's than sweet. even just murdering him for asking. Yeah. It's so disrespectful. <laughs> it's like the most disrespectful way to kill someone. This is just a serial killer. Yeah. Paying who, that, who history has somehow labeled an outlaw. This is like a literal... I mean... Outlaw. <laughs> yes. Outlaw. Outlaw Ted Bundy. <laughs> he's an out- I, In theory, <laughs> he's outside the law. So so egregiously outside the law. This is, I don't even think, he's not even, he's not even robbing anything. Like, he's not even chasing any wealth at no this point. No one called him a robber. If you they slightly inconvenience him, he almost kills you. Or does. The, it sounds like he doesn't almost kill anyone except for that nine-year-old kid. The pimp. Yeah. Wasn't inconveniencing him at all. The pimp was mm. simply See, collecting mean, a agreed upon debt's not even the right word because debt sounds burdensome. An agreed upon payment. He doesn't pay for it, man. He doesn't pay for pussy. That's that's robbery. Actually, well, he fucks. Yeah, like like he fucks someone who thinks they're gonna pay. Like <laughs> that's theft. Yeah, that's theft. What's that? Wasn't an eighteen seventies pimp like? It's the same, actually. It's the exact same. <laughs> it's the yeah. exact same. Like, you know, purple satin robe, leather, or, uh, leopard print cuffs, mm-hmm. big hat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Pimp out, uh, pimp attire has not changed at all. It's actually been the same since the beginning of time. Yeah. Yeah. In January 1871, Hardin was arrested for the murder of the Waco, Texas City Marshal. He, of course, denied committing this crime. Following his arrest, he was held temporarily in a log jail in the town of Marshall. Went in, transferred to Waco for trial. Mm. While locked up, <laughs> I have to assume this was at a Twin Peaks. Yes. While locked up, he bought a revolver from another prisoner. <laughs> they didn't what? Do much What's prison? <laughs> it was, what? There was a cell with a gun store in it. <laughs> like, how do you get a gun? It's just like that's what is it we were talking about. I mean, this might have been off air, or we were talking about on the on the watch line the other day about the people who were like, "What do you mean we can't drink and drive anymore? What are yeah. they going to do next? Make more seatbelts?" Yeah, it's just like the Second Amendment used to be so wide open that it's like, like judges were like, "Look, you can't legally take his gun not away. allow prisoners to have guns." Well, I mean, it wouldn't shock me because, like, for the longest time, like, if you escaped prison, it wasn't like additional sentencing. It was just like you have an intrinsic right to want to be free. That's I think that's how right. it still is in, in like Sweden or something. It's like it's not illegal to try to escape prison because any human being would want to escape being yeah. in prison. 
yeah. So it's like, all right, we just bring you back. Which, by the way, um, you should definitely make trying to escape. Like, that is a crime. You've been handed down a punishment by the society you agreed to live in. It's a challenge, though. If you get out, you should at least have a certain amount of years eliminated from your sentence. Like, what? if I get past a certain barrier. That's on the prison. Yeah. I Knock off a year. I agree. Knock off five. I'll say this. You shouldn't have to reserve any time you weren't in for if you escaped. Yeah. Your time is your time, and that's on the state to keep you there. That's right. That's what I'm saying. Like, however, it shouldn't, yeah, you should, you should make it punishable to escape. It makes the, so it makes the escape ease better. Does There's it? There's more stakes. Higher stakes if you get caught. Yeah. Yeah. You better never get caught. It makes them better on the outside. So as they go to transfer him to Waco, uh, they make camp along the way. And uh, Harden escapes his ropes, of gets that gun, does. and uh, beats one of the <laughs> the police with the butt of the pistol. Do you think do you this guy's just Hannibal oh, Lecter? I was about to say, do you think he realized like he was about to shoot him? He's like, wait a minute, there's all sorts of things I can do. With oh this. my god, I can make this so much worse for this guy. <laughs> yeah, I've and that never be, even thought about. That'd be so rad for me. Using it like a hammer before. This is incredible. What a great tool. Oh, so my God. Beat the shit out of one of the police. Uh, then the other law officer, he shoots it. Uh, takes his horse and escapes. This mm. is literally a serial killer. This is Hannibal Lecter. Cutting the face, like, luring the guards in, cutting the face off one or whatever. Like, I mean, this is, he has done nothing Jesse James-esque. Nothing even remotely like Jesse James. I mean, he's good with a gun. I, yeah, I guess that's it, yeah. Yeah. Harden then claimed he was arrested on his way back by three men named Smith, Jones, and Davis, but in Bell County, Texas, uh, he killed all three with their guns. With their guns? I just, all right. Wait, after, they what? Beca- after they became drunk and careless, and he escaped again. Oh, okay, so they were hammered. They were like, we got him. This guy I, ain't going nowhere. I want to call this guy a liar, but I feel like this all tracks. Yeah. No, if they were already drunk, like, I could see how you get there. But I also feel like they would get drunk. You know what I mean? Like, you'd be like, hell, oh, we got this boy tied up. And Time yeah. to drink four handles of whiskey. I was about to say, what is drunk? Because, <laughs> like, We've talked about normal before, yeah. is very drunk. Yeah. There's actually a Texas historical marker that notes in the 1870s, Hardin hid out in the vicinity of Pilgrim, Texas. So they they document in this little uh, plaque in Pilgrim, Texas, that oh he passed through town. Yep, gotta have something. Sweet. Every town's gotta have something. Where did Bundy kill a sorority girl? Florida State. Florida State. It's Florida State yeah. It's just like <laughs> it's just like a plaque outside of the house. Here once traversed the famous Ted Bundy. <laughs> Be really cruel, right? Rush would suck. For them. It's like, don't just but cover that's the sign. <laughs> don't worry about it. He's that guy? Yes. The rumor was that he was staying in the Sigma Chi house. What is now the Sigma Chi house. What was it at? It was like an old hotel kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. It wasn't. He, he didn't like, like learn, boarding house. He didn't like learn the handshake. And he's like, I'm an alum. Can I hang out? In Hoke. Yes. We did once let a drifter stay with us who knew the handshake. That's the rules, dude. It is the rules. Yeah. He was like, hey, I can't have money for a hotel. I was uh, uh, adult sick in Nebraska in the 70s. Did the handshake. And we're like, well, that's what they tell us we're supposed to do, so sleep on the couch. Yeah, you're lucky you didn't get Ted bundy Well, they got robbed. Uh, no, our cook robbed us, who we also let sleep in our house for a while when he was homeless. But that was dope because he, he slept in the basement and we would wake him up in the middle of the night and he'd make us quesadillas and shit when we were drunk. So. Yeah, he ri- rightfully robbed you guys. Yeah, he's like, fuck that. You stole yeah. sleep. Over Christmas break, he stole all our PS2s and shit. That's awesome. Good for him. Yeah, it's fine. I will say the most unhinged people on earth are the ones cooking and cleaning at a fraternity house that are like contracted out. We had a guy who was a uh, severely recovering alcoholic and a nom vet that was our dishwasher. And he let us know how insensitive it was that we had parties there. Like, it's just screamed at us while we were eating dinner constantly. Sweet. It's like, dude, what? <laughs> like, who? So there's just handles of vodka everywhere. I'm like, yeah. Where do you think you are? It's like, dude. It's like, you, 
You go down to the sewage plant and say, man, it stinks in here. It's like, you know where you're fucking going, dude. <laughs> After the Bell County shootings, Hardin found refuge with his cousins, the Clements, who were then living in Gonzales in South Texas. They suggested he could make money by driving cattle to Kansas as a cowboy. It sounds too uh, labor intensive for this guy. He's like, I don't know. What if I just murder people and take their money? You know any cattle drivers who already have money that I could murder? Yeah. Well, he does this thinking he could get out of Texas long enough for his pursuers to lose interest because back then you could just wait it out. Yeah, yeah totally. We've we've talked about this before. Just move t- move across town, one town over. Lay low. I mean, if you've done people like, forget. If you've done like forty hits, yeah, maybe you'd leave a state. Right. Yeah, but go up to Kansas. Nobody knows you. Yeah, Kansas. Might as well be Mars. <laughs> it's fucking it's so far. Crazy. Yeah. So Hardin worked with his cousins, Russell and Cattle, for Jake Johnson and the Columbus Carroll. Hardin writes that he made a uh, trail boss for the herd. So he's good at his job. Allegedly. Allegedly, yeah. In February 1871, while the herd was being collected for the drive to Kansas, a freedman, Bob King, attempted to cut a beef cow out of the herd. When he refused to obey Hardin's demand to stop, what is, I don't know what that means. He's trying to steal a cow. Okay, yeah, there was a there was a cow thief. Hardin then and the black guy was trying to steal it. Yeah, Hardman hit him over the head with a pistol. He loves this new hammer <laughs> move. He's like, man, shooting them, they just die so quick. I love to watch them get sad. Yeah, about how they're dying, about how I'm going to kill it. Yeah, but again, then they're just too unconscious <clears throat> to do anything about it. This is the old uh, classic Hardin. He said. He dead. <laughs> yeah. Hardin also wounded three Mexicans in an argument over a three-card Monty card game. Three-card Monty. Nice. He pistol-whipped one man over the head, uh, shoot, shot another man in the arm, and shot the other in the lung. How is he so fast? I don't know. My guess is they're just all sleeping and he's a liar. Yes. Or he's a liar. Yeah. Either he's totally lying or he's killing people when they're like, this is like, uh, who what was the chick I did, Hannah Dustin, right? Imagine, like, she, she killed all those Indians in their sleep, right, with yeah. the hatchet. Like, imagine she was, just, <laughs> she just told some John Wick story instead. She was like, I grabbed the hatchet, and then just, like, did karate on all eight <laughs> yeah. of them with a fucking hatchet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I backflipped off of the first one's face <laughs> and speared the other one. Yeah. Just the real Matrix shit. It's like, no. Then we you went, either you either murdered them in their sleep or this never happened. Then we went into musket ball time. <laughs> Just like bad bullet time. It's a great joke. In the summer of 1871, while driving cattle on the Chisholm Trail to Abilene, Kansas, Hardin fought a bunch of Mexican uh, vaqueros and Ooh. cattle rustlers. We killed them all, I'm guessing? Towards the end of the drive, a Mexican herd crowded in behind Hardin's, and there were some trouble brewing between the two herds. I get, you don't want to get your herds mixed up. That would piss me off. To be quite mm-hmm. honest, that would probably legitimately. Like, just give us some space. Like, what the fuck, man? Yeah. And they're like, I don't know. Fucking cows, man. I don't fucking. Hardin exchanged words with the man in charge of the other herd. Both men were on horseback. The Mexican fired his gun at Hardin, putting a hole through Hardin's hat. Oh. Hardin found that. His own weapon, a worn-out cap and ball pistol with uh, a loose cylinder, would he, not fire. It's, yeah, because he kept using it as a hammer on people's skulls. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of dented. It's weird. Yeah. He dismounted and managed to discharge the gun by steadying the cylinder with one hand and pulling the trigger with the other. He hit the Mexican in the thigh. A truce was declared, and both parties went their separate ways. So, uh, he didn't kill this guy. Sure. Well, not for He, like he learned mercy. Yeah. Although the guy tried to kill him too, so yeah, maybe he respected that. They almost got him. clearly. Yeah, he was like, "Man, did he just they're real the feisty like, when they're awake." This, so, yeah, I got I, yeah, kidding because he uh, he bars a pistol from his friend and tracks down this Mexican and kills him. Oh, <laughs> Jesus oh. Christ! So they had a truce. And they're like, "All right, let's go our separate ways." He's like, "Hey, Jim, let me get that gun real quick." Yeah, no, he fatally shoots this dude and executes him in his sleep. He kills people in their sleep. I'm pretty sure that's the moral. I think of this most story. of the people yeah. he's killed are in their sleep. <laughs> yeah, or they're like bent over, not looking. Now, like. for some of them, but then while he does it in their camp, the Vaqueros camp, a firefight between the rival camps ensues. So, like, just blasting left and right. I'm sure. 
You should be able to kill, by the way, if you walk up on a camp and everybody's sleeping, you should be able to kill with a revolver, like six of them before anyone can do anything. Well, he kills exactly six in the exchange. I knew it. That that tracks to me. Well, there are six bullets in the fucking thing. He's like, literally, the one, you get a literal free shot, bang, and basically another literal free shot on the guy next to him. Before. Because they're just like, what? what? Yeah. Bang. The third guy's barely getting up, bang, dead. Yeah. Fourth guy is probably the only one that's starting to react, but you can still get him pretty easy. Five and six are the only ones that you really, really, really have to worry about. And that's, by the way, assuming they're all, like, none of them are, are drunk, like the other guys he killed, or or light sleepers, or you know what I mean? Like, fuck, yeah. dude. And by the way, they're drunk. They're drunk. They're all drunk. Everyone is drunk. The soberest person you know in that time is fucking drunk. Yeah. When they get to Abilene, Kansas, Harden claims that him and his companion Payne got into an argument in a restaurant with someone that was anti-Texas. Mm. That happens to this day. Tough. Yeah. Yeah. Got to fuck around. I remember every time someone was like, hey, Dairy Queen is Texas. And I'm like, no, it's like from Illinois or some shit. They tried to murder me. It's true. Yeah, it like, is from Illinois. So Payne gets shot in the arm, and uh, our guy puts one in the back of the stranger's head. Yeah. I'm sure. So he's not really keeping a low profile here. Not remotely. <laughs> this guy is just constantly trying to get five It's because stars. he loves killing. Yeah. He's done almost nothing illegal that's cool. He is only murdered. And I guess s- basically raped a prostitute. Yeah. He's a bad person. <laughs> he's not a good dude, no. No, he is an no. outlaw. And I know she's listening to this right now. I'm sorry, your relative is not. That's what you're apologizing for, not me calling her homeless for fucking 20 minutes? <laughs> well, she technically is homeless. <laughs> didn't call her poor. I didn't call her poor, no. She is homeless. And you should pay teachers more. Yes, we agree with that. Yeah, my, I, I my balanced sister, it out. I told her. Yeah, <clears throat> my sister's a teacher, or was. She went to, like, grad school, and now she's a principal. But teachers don't make no money. Pay them. Oh. On the 4th of July in 1871, a Texas Trail boss named William Coran was killed on the Cottonwood Trail by an unnamed Mexican who fled south. He was subsequently killed by two cowboys in the Sumner County, Kansas restaurant on July 20th. Hardin admitted to being involved in the shooting of the Mexican. Admitted to? Or was just like, hell yeah, give me another body. I'll yeah. take it. He'll take credit for anything. Probably the latter. Yeah. yeah. Like, I'll do it. Yeah, I did it. I'm fucking, do- I'm so dope, dude. I've killed like fucking 300 people. Every murder that happened last year, that was me. This guy sounds like someone who lies about fucking chicks. But mm-hmm. killing people back then was was stacking your body count. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, body count now, it's fucking. Body count then was killing. Kill, killing. When they get to Abilene, Kansas, the Bull's Head Tavern, uh, have been established as partnership between ex-lawman Ben Thompson and gambler Phil Coe. The two entrepreneurs have painted a picture of a <laughs> giant bull with a large erect penis on the side of their establ- establishment as an advertisement. Dope. That's cool. Love that. That's I really want to go good. there. Yeah. Well, well, didn't someone ask us on, um, go to patreon.com slash software history, on our voicemail uh, episode, like, I don't know, like, just where would you want to go hang out in history? Because we said, like, Pompeii. Where did you want to visit? Oh, yeah. Hard Bull Inn. That's yeah, where I'm going. the Hard Bull Dick Inn is, I'm partying there. Not when this asshole shows up, but. Citizens complained to the town marshal, Wild Bill Hickok. Oh. This is a familiar name. Okay. Wild Bill. This is pre-Deadwood, of course. When Thompson and Co. refused his request to remove the bull and the penis, Hickok altered it himself, which infuriated Thompson, uh, who tried to inc- incite his new acquaintance, Harden. Uh, telling him uh, he's a damn Yankee, picks on rebels, especially Texans. We got to kill this motherfucker. So, yeah. So, uh, Bill so Hickok was like, you need to take this dick pic down. Right. And they were like, hey, Harden, he hates Texas. You and Rebs. And he's been there yeah. for like two days. And By like, the way, he hates that, Texas. I love that that's a post, so dur- uh, during, of course, but post Civil War thing where it's like, that's essentially libs and cons, right? It's like, oh, he's like a Republican or like, Oh, he's fucking lib. You know what I mean? Like, that's how people talked about each other. Some people talked about each other. 
Um, that cracks me up. Shit yeah. don't change. And by the way, the worst possible person you could try to start a shoot. Is this how this guy dies? I hope. No. Uh, Fuck. Well, here's the thing, right? He actually respects Hickok. Good call. He, n- he says, uh, if Bill needs killing, do it yourself. Smart. He doesn't respect Hickok. He's afraid of Hickok? Yes. He knows that he can't kill Hickok. Yeah. Because no one can. The only person who killed Hickok shot him in the back, Harden style, shot him in the back of the fucking head in a saloon. He's not going to straight up kill Hickok. No one's going to straight up kill Hickok. Yeah. Well, later that night, Harden was confronted by Hickok. He told him that he was wearing guns and a, is a violation of town ordinance and ordered him to hand over his guns, which he did in a quite surprising way. Did not expect Hickok to be a, hey, this is a gun-free zone, man. <laughs> Hickok doesn't give a fuck. Yeah. Hickok it's- will do Hickok can kill anyone. Yeah. He does not care. So Harden reached down, picked up his revolvers from the holsters, handed them to Wild Bill's uh, butts forward, then swiftly rolled them over in his hands, and suddenly Wild Bill was staring right into the muzzles. However, both men did back down. Hickok had acknowledged that Harden was a wanted man, and he advised Harden to avoid problems while he was in Abilene, which Hickok... Or uh, Harden did agree to. He's okay. just like, eh, well, just let me keep my guns, man. Yeah. And Hickok was like, quit fucking around. Mm-hmm. I still think Hickok had the drop on him. Hickok would have murdered that motherfucker. Maybe he just respected him. He just like Respect. No, I, I think Hickok was just like, this guy's a fucking psycho. If I don't let him be a little bit of a psycho, he's going to be a massive psycho. Harden met up with Hickok again while on a cattle drive in August 1871. This time, Hickok allowed Harden to carry his pistols into town, something he had never allowed others to do. So he, he kind of got the the burn from the hot star, like Wild Bill. I think so he was ooh. a star fucker. Yeah. He was a little starstruck. Yeah. Because he, this man clearly didn't view himself as a serial killer, which he was. He viewed himself as a tough guy. Like and a Wild he, Bill. And yeah. he also viewed Wild Bill as a tough guy. And Wild Bill is a very famous tough guy. So this guy's like, oh, man cool he likes me yeah so they kind of brew up a little bit of a friendship uh at one point harden's cousin go is in prison and harden kind of arranges for hickok to let him go sure mm-hmm. i mean hickok's a not a good dude no like he's a piece of shit what is good what is good here right what is good well, what I mean, is he's drunk a, he's what a lawman but he's a drunk and a gambling addict <laughs> well what is lawman like it's it's, lemon. it's all very relative. He keeps the peace a little bit. Yeah, by blasting people. That's dope. Shoot first, questions later. Yeah. Well, questions never, I guess, because you're shooting. Yeah. Uh, August 6, 1871, Harden, Harden's cousin, uh, Gip Clements, and a rancher friend named Charles Cougar put up for the night at the American House Hotel after an evening of gambling. Clements and Harden shared one room with Cougar in the adjacent room. All three had been drinking heavily. Sometime during the evening, Harden had awakened by loud snoring coming from Cougar's room. Great name. He first shouted several times for the man to roll over, and then, irritated by the lack of response, he drunkenly fired several bullets through the wall and killed Cougar. Yeah, it's a dick move. Uh, He was asleep. Let me um, channel my 90s sitcom here. I'm a bad snorer, and my wife would probably do that if she, if she could. I, a, I like wear a retainer to stop my snoring. Well, this once again just proves the concept of he kills everyone in their sleep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Even kills. people that he's trying to wake up to stop snoring. Just through a wall. He just knows they're asleep. That's the kills snoring. Him. And I assume a wall at this point is just like this little thin piece of wood right here. Yeah, it's not. It's not good lumber, man. There's no, He's but I mean, like, there's nothing wood. in between them. Yeah, you know what I mean. The wall is literally just that little. Just in killing Cougar was not actually the big offense here, but he had violated the ordinance prohibiting firing a gun in city limits. Well, it's gun free zone. Yeah, can't just be shooting a gun. I like how there's like, I uh, like obviously you can't <laughs> shooting a gun in city limits. It would be legal for him to shoot a gun if someone was trying to kill him, right? If he was in danger, mm-hmm. right? But if you're just shooting, a, it's never legal, as far as I know, to just shoot a gun 
for no, like you need to be at a specific area, like a firing range or on your private property or something like that. Like you can't just be in the middle of a town or in a building and just shoot your gun for fun. For fun to use at whatever, whether it's at another person or not. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there needs to be like very specific <laughs> circumstances for you to shoot your gun. You can't just pop off. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, a lot of people don't know this, but they're not toys. They're not out, toys. Yeah, it turns out guns aren't toys. They are very specific, useful, dangerous tools. Well, listen, he was half drunk and half dressed. And he and Clements exited through a second story window onto the roof of the hotel. He saw Hickok arrive with four policemen. Hickok's just like, God fucking damn it. He heard one gunshot and he's like, oh, yeah, I know exactly I know where that, that came from. It's the yeah. guy I let keep his guns. Yeah. The lunatic. The only one. That I let keep his guns. Because I didn't want to deal with the lunatic at the time. Because I had a poker game to get to. Harden, and I, Harden leapt from the roof into the street and hid in the haystack for the rest of the night. He didn't want to. He wanted that smoke. Just in the middle of the haystack. Uh-huh. Pulled an Assassin's Creed. Probably pretty cozy in there. According to what? He pulled an Assassin's he Creed. He pulled an Assassin's Creed. Oh, I thought he said Creed. according to Assassin's no. Creed. <laughs> Three like, where, where are we? I mean, like, I know this is softcore history, but where are we sourcing things from now? <laughs> Dude, Ubisoft, man, or Bethesda <laughs> makes it, yeah. It's the most disappointing historical fiction movie I've ever watched in my life. It wasn't great. You had Fastbender. I know. That made me so hyped. It's f- it's so forgettable, I can't believe it. They need to make a show. It should not have never been a movie. Agreed. So, uh, Harding claimed he later ambushed lawman Tom Carson and two other deputies there. According to Harden, he did not kill them, but forced them to remove all their clothing and walk back to Abilene when they found him out just outside. Um, Weird. I have a question mm-hmm. that maybe you answer later, but I kind of think you don't. Um, who published this autobiography? So he writes it when he's in prison, uh, and we'll get to that. But they publish it in like the 20s. 1920s. So just like a real publisher. Probably one uh-huh. that still exists today. Yeah. What's the guy's name again? Harding? I know Harding, but what, what's his full name? Jo- John Wesley Harding. Okay. I bet you it's Penguin. Feels like it is. Feels like a Penguin book. What do you think it's called? I'll, I'll look it up. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's called Gunfighter, an autobiography. Did he name it? <laughs> Did he name it that? I'm trying to think. Uh, Gunfighter is pretty loose. Gun murderer and sleeper. This is you're talking about an earlier time, right? Like it's people are simpler back then. Yeah, they just call things things. You know, like they don't need they don't need fancy, f- stupid titles. Yeah, I'm not seeing a publisher right now. Well, there had to be one. Mm-hmm. It's fine. I'll look it up. You okay. keep going. But yeah, the incident earned Harden a reputation as a man so mean he once shot a man for snoring. Oh, I mean, that's, that's I guess, accurate. Yeah. A yeah. couple quick bullet points here. I mean, this entire episode is just bullet points of incidents he had. Following his escape, Hardin claimed to have been involved in the following gunfights. September 1871, Hardin was involved in a gunfight with two Texas special policemen, two freedmen, Privates Green Paramore and John Lackey, during which Paramore was killed and Lackey wounded. September 1871, also... Uh, a black posse from Austin, Texas, came after him for killing Paramore, but said they returned sadder and wiser after he ambushed and killed three of them. Hmm. In May 1872, or 45 miles outside Corpus Christi, Texas, after he was followed by two Mexicans, shot one off his horse and the other quit the fight. On June 19th, 1872, Hardin was involved in a gunfight in Willis, Texas. Mm-hmm. Really no details of that. Just got in a gunfight. Just started popping shots. Yeah, just murdered more people. <laughs> yeah. Just got a little horny. I saw some tents about a mile away, so I just started shooting at them. Yeah, I was like, oh, those people look asleep. <laughs> That's good <laughs> Maybe murdering. <laughs> Maybe I'll clip a couple. I'm an outlaw. He's just... Pew, pew. <laughs> he's like, walks up to like a sleeping woman. He's like, pew, I'm Jesse James. <laughs> Fuck off. Yeah. Good Lord. On July 26, 1872, Harden wounded Texas State Policeman Sony Spates in the arm with a pistol in Hemp Hill, Texas. In earlier 1872, Harden was in South Central Texas in the area of the Gonzales County 
it was about the time that Harden married Jane Bowen and started to keep regular company with her brother, ca- uh, cattle rustler Robert Bowen. So, oh, he fell in love. That's great. Hooray. <laughs> Everyone has somebody. Honestly, at this point, he seemed like, well, I guess he was fucking a prostitute, so I don't know. Seems like he only loves killing. Yeah. Like, really loves killing. Dan, even this guy can get a wife, dude. I'm d- I, for real. Come on. Know. What's wrong with me? <laughs> Maybe not, you should start murdering people in their sleep. Enough. I don't know. Yeah. It is, like, I guarantee you, by the way, and this is okay if it's true of, like, I don't even know, a bombardier and a, a fucking B-52 or... Or a, or a machine gunner in World War Two, but like most people, most people, or even, even a, a soldier now, I guess, whatever from the global global war. But most people should have had sex with more people than they've killed. Yeah, it's a good question. I I, I think for it's, him, I wonder how many. What the ratio the, is? Yeah, it's probably one to one. No, it's definitely lower. It's, he's he's got more bodies cold than hot. Yeah, he's in wa- a bunch of wild west towns and cattle towns. He's f- probably fucking a bunch of prostitutes. He's stacking two to three bodies a night on the murders. <laughs> yeah, he's fucking one hooker, dude. This guy could actually hit the Mayan sacrifice number. I think <laughs> if he lived a full healthy life. Yeah, the Mayans. People don't realize it, but the Az- uh, Aztecs. Sorry. Yeah, Aztecs. Was the, Aztecs. the Aztecs killed two million people a day. Yeah. <laughs> it's two hundred fifty thousand a year. Jeez. According to my sources. And upwards of five million a month. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot of folks. People so don't when he gets married, he kind of gets involved in this little family rivalry with he, this. Oh, of course he, he does. He found the feud. Of course yeah. he becomes he, f- a f- he found no, the feud. I'm sorry. No. Of course this man immediately became a hockey dad. Yeah. They get into a feud with the rival Sutton faction for several years. On August seventh, they don't know who they're fucking with. August 7, 1872, Hardin was wounded by a shotgun blast in a gambling dispute at the Gates Saloon in Trinity, Texas. He was shot by Phil Sublett, who had lost money to him in a poker game. So he's a great, great card player. Yeah. Probably I, cheating. I don't understand, like... Or he's just playing other fucking idiots. Morons. You know what I mean? Like, he's not the World Series of poker. Yeah, it's he's just at a table with other dumb dudes. fuck cattle rustling fucking... Idiot, no job having outlaws. Yep. Yeah. So two buckshot pellets penetrated Harden's kidneys, and for a time it looked like he was going to die. This can't kill. Can't they kill this die. man. I assume. While recuperating from his wounds, Harden decided to, he wanted to settle down. Finally. <sighs> sure. Now that my kidneys are leaking blood, I think it's time to <laughs> kick up my boots. So he surrendered to Sheriff Reagan, brother of John. Henninger Reagan of Cherokee County, Texas. He was wounded in the right knee by an accidental gunshot from a nervous deputy <laughs> as he was trying to <laughs> surrender. <laughs> I, I don't blame that guy. Completely understandable. Yeah, that makes sense. A thousand percent. Like, understandable. This guy's coming to the jail. We got to start Shoot firing. him. Start firing. Start Shoot bla- him. Start blasting. Harden made a... Uh, Sick bed surrendered to authorities, handing over his guns to Sheriff Reagan, and asked to be tried for his past crimes in order to clear the slate. Oh. But how do you start with that? What do you... It's... What do you mean clear the slate, tried for his past crimes? He's murdered like a hundred people. You just hang them. We can only hang you once. They dude. hang horse yeah. thieves. Yeah. Horse thieves. Honestly, that The horse is still alive. It can be given back. Yeah, but he's brokering the deal. Sure. Give him a plea deal. Hey, I'm here. I'm not going to murder any of you in your sleep, I swear. Uh, The cops are like, all right, so hold on. You're going to promise us that if we drink eight gallons of whiskey and leave the keys within arm's length of your cell, you won't, you know, take the key, turn that little lock, take one of our pistols and blow all our brains out while we're passed out. What kind of guy do you think I am? (laughs) I'm a changed man. Well, here's the thing. Uh, Sheriff Reagan was like, yeah, we're going to charge you with all these murders. The murders that you did. The only question, what did he ever rob? 
What did he have? Like, one pimp? One pimp. He yeah. robbed one pimp. Well, then he killed him. And then murdered him. Yeah. He has committed no cool stagecoach robberies. He has done nothing, nothing other than murder people. He is a literal serial killer. He's just a bad person. Now, knowing that uh, Sheriff is going to charge him with all these crimes, he decides to change his mind. He's like, I don't want to do this anymore. What? It's the only crimes he's committed. Again, he hasn't robbed a bank or so a stagecoach. He had a relative smuggle a hacksaw to hide him while he was in prison, and he escaped by cutting through the bars of the prison window. Smuggle in what? A cake. <laughs> a hacksaw? <laughs> yeah. They probably just handed it through probably. the window. Yeah. yeah. The judge, some judge is I like, mean, I mean, based on the Second Amendment, you can't not let them have a hacksaw. No, it's like, I, I imagine it's the same way. Like, they got a gun into the Waco log prison, so I can't imagine getting a hacksaw in another shitty Texas town prison is that hard. Yeah, these are really tiny towns. Yeah. There's not, they don't have enough men to guard the back of the prison. Uh, yeah, it's just the window in the back. They're just like, blip, here's your hacksaw. And everyone is, of course, has had their own handle of whiskey to drink that night. Yeah. Hardin escaped prison with that hacksaw despite a guard of six men a hundred dollar reward was offered for his arrest how he had six people guarding him what does guarding mean yeah what is anything in this time period so he had there's just six people at the jail yeah getting blasted i assume even yeah. honestly like sober then is drunk now yeah the family he marries into, the Taylors, they get the beef with the Sutton feud came to a head when Hardin himself killed two lawmen known to be Sutton family allies on July 18th, 1873 in Curo, Texas. How'd he kill him? Hardin killed uh, Dewatt County Deputy Sheriff J.B. Morgan, who served under County Sheriff Jack Helm, a former captain in the Texas State Police and leader of the Sutton Force at the time. I straight up guarantee, even if they weren't asleep, like, this guy killed them by just walking up and shooting them. Yeah. Like, there was no, like, there was no draw. You know, there's no showdown. Like, this guy's just like, hey, dick. Well, yeah, he kills Helm in the uh, town square in Albuquerque, Texas. Yeah. On the run again in June 1873, Hardin assisted in the escape of his brother-in-law, Joshua Boa, Bo or Bowen, from the Gonzalez County Jail. Allegedly, Hardin was also involved in this killing of Thomas Holderman. So, I just, at least he's taking claims. Anyone like, who has died near this man. I have a tolerance at this point to hearing that he killed someone or broke out of jail. Like, I'm like, that's... Whatever. Yeah, yeah, of course he did. Yeah, to, to tell sure. It's just different. statistics now. Yeah, yeah you're yeah. just like, whatever. It's this like, man, it's like, <laughs> he is a boat in a lake. And bodies are just the wake. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's just, anywhere he goes, there's just dead bodies behind him. Yeah, it's not even, like, that remarkable to me that he's done this now. This and again, times. this is not an outlaw. I mean, technically, it's an no, outlaw. No, he he's an outlaw. But, like, this is not some cool guy who's, like, puts a mask over his face and steals, you know, whatever. He's just a serial killer. But he puts on a, if you're a serial killer, but you put on a cowboy outfit... <laughs> You're an outlaw. It's actually scarier. Think about it. Like, someone's like, there's a serial killer in Austin right now. Yeah. But, like, what if they were, I saw a cowboy dragging a man <laughs> out to the river. <laughs> oh, boy, is an outlaw? <laughs> so, wait, that's not a serial killer. That's an outlaw. That's an outlaw. <laughs> yeah. 1874, he takes a brief visit to Florida. Lays low. He don't want sure. none of that Florida smoke. Where he met his wife. Jane and their younger daughter, whom he had re relocated under the assumed name Swain. Hardin then met up with his gang on May 26, 1874, in Comanche, Texas, Saloon, to celebrate his 21st birthday. So he did all this before Swain. Oh, what? my God. <laughs> what? <The> w <laughs> I thought this dude was like 40 by this time. I, I didn't think 40, but I thought 30. So he was in his... his Man years, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. No, I didn't realize it had been six years since his first kill. He got a lot done. I stand by that he killed more than he fucked. Yeah. Quite a bit. Six years? He definitely killed more. And, I mean, yeah, that's that's prolific. That's so many bodies in six this years. This is a 
biggest piece of shit. This mm. dude is Bundy. This dude is every... He's just efficient. It's just, again, he put on a cowboy hat, so it's folksy. It ain't, it ain't, I'm that, not a psychopath. That's the Wild West. This is how we fight. <laughs> yeah. Arden uh, was spotted by Brown County Deputy Sheriff Charles Webb entering the premises. He asked Webb if he had come to arrest him. When Webb replied he had not, Arden invited him to the hotel for a drink. Pass. I'm good. Yeah. As Webb followed him inside, Arden... Claimed Webb drew his gun. Yeah. Oh, he's coming right for me. <laughs> <laughs> One of Harden's sword. men yelled out a warning, and in the ensuing gunfight, Webb was shot dead. No shit. Of, course, of course he was. You, the only way to kill this man is in his own sleep. Yeah. No, I mean, you just shoot him. In the, like, any decent person, just On shoot him side. in the back of the head. Just shoot him in the back of the head. Yeah. Immediately. Now, wrong move here. Webb's a very popular man in town. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. He finally killed the wrong person? Finally killed the wrong person. 300th time's a charm, yeah. I guess. Yeah. The death of popular Webb resulted in the formation of a lynch mob. To, so, essentially, finally, there were more people trying to kill him than he had bullets in I his was chamber. I about to say, we need more than 12 men. <laughs> we need more than 12. Hardin's parents and wife were taken into protective custody while his brother Joe and two cousins, brothers uh, Bud and Tom Dixon, were arrested on outstanding warrants. A group of local men broke into the jail in July 1874 and hanged Joe and two Dixon boys. After this, Hardin and Jim Taylor parted ways for good, and he escapes. He gets his cousins killed by the lynch mob. Yeah. But by the way, you said his book, his autobiography was published in the 20s, which means he would be in his 70s. He is not. He doesn't make it that long. Okay. On January 20th, 1875, the Texas legislator, uh, Governor Richard B. Hubbard, offered a $4,000 reward for Hardin's arrest. Damn, that's quite the reward back then. An undercover Texas Ranger named Jack Duncan intercepted a letter sent to Hardin's father-in-law by Hardin's brother-in-law, and the letter mentioned that Hardin was hiding out on the Alabama-Florida border using the name James W. Swain. Hold on. Call it Florabama. Florabama. It's in Orange Beach, man. In his autobiography, Hardin admitted that he adopted this alias from Brenham, Texas, town marshal Henry Swain, who had married a cousin of Hardin's name, Molly Parks. I've always thought about how what I would use as an alias if I like, because you you know how like you accidentally just make a password like something that mm-hmm. is related to you. I would uh, you know I feel like I would accidentally make a name that is in relation to some way that like let's say I had to try to disappear from my family, and like like my pa- I feel like my parents or like my brother or something would be able to figure out who it was. Yeah. Um. But you literally have to pick like the the most benign. Dumb it like you can't be clever with you can't do anything you need it needs to be like Jack Smith, literally yeah like you need to just pass over it, it needs to put you to sleep yeah in March 1876 Hardin wounded a man in Florida who had tried to mediate a quarrel between him and another man so a guy tried to break up a fight catches one for his interfering. Weird, this guy's still getting in fights. It's almost like he loves killing because he's just a fucking serial killer in a cowboy hat. Yeah. In November 1876 in Mobile, Alabama, Hardin was arrested briefly for having marked cards. Oh, oh there it is. Bitch. It all comes out. This fucking bitch. He was, he was cheating in the cards whole fucking and then killing time. the people that accused him of it. In mid-1877, two former slaves of his father's um, tried to capture Hardin in Gainesville, Florida. Whoop, whoop. Go Gators. Go he guys. probably just killed two black guys. Let's just get to the point where yeah. he kills, kills two black guys. He killed one and blinded the other. Yeah, okay, yeah. even better. August 24th, 1877, Rangers and local authorities confronted Hardin on a train in Pensacola, Florida. What do you... <laughs> Kill him. At this point, it's like a bartender. Like You're just like vomiting in your lap and crying, and there's like, hey, hey. Have you had enough? I'm yeah, getting, I almost think you've had. What do you want to drink? But I th- almost think you've had enough. 
It's time. Just stop. Light this the whole train on fire. <laughs> he attempted to draw a forty four uh Colt cap and ball pistol, but it got caught up in the suspenders. The officers knocked Harden unconscious. Good. What are you even don't leave him alive? I oh, just shoot him in the head. Ranger John B. Armstrong uh killed one of the men he was accompanied by and arrested two others. Harden claimed that he was captured while smoking his pipe and that Duncan found Harden's pistol under his shirt only after his arrest. Oh, so he was like, no, I didn't lose or did I wasn't even up. trying. Yeah, he didn't claim. He's like, oh, man. I, yeah. So stupid. That's like a, in Avengers uh, Infinity War when the Mantis chick drops on Thanos and she's like, sleep. Why not just be like, um, aneurysm. <laughs> Yeah, um, you know what I, I, mean? don't, I don't get that reference. Harden was tried for killing Webb, the, you know, guy from the, the important killing. <laughs> the right, the right. one guy he shouldn't have killed. I mean, right. look, it only takes one, right? That's what that's always funny when, to me when people complain about, like, I mean, he got off anyway because the prosecutors are morons. But when they're like, why is Bill Cosby only being tried for, like, ten of the ch-? Like, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I, I understand what you want, but like ten's more than enough. One's more than enough, especially because he's so old. Like he'll go to jail, and he did until the prosecutors ruined it all. But so on June fifth, eighteen seventy eight, he was sentenced to serve twenty five years in Huntsville prison. Okay, didn't even get death. Meanwhile, you get accused of stealing a horse in yeah. the wrong town, lynch mob, right away. Yeah, straight to death. Straight to straight. Straight to the gallows. There's so many stories of in that time period. Someone bought a horse that was stolen, and they're like, "You stole that horse. You're dead." And that guy will just die. Just yeah. die. Just yeah. die. But he's like, "No, I didn't." And they're like, "At a certain point, though, they kind of reward you for your body count." Like, oh, I'll knock off five years. This guy's pretty famous, man. Yeah. At this point, yeah. Uh, in 1879, while at Huntsville Prison, Hardin and 50 other convicts were stopped within hours of successfully tunneling into the prison armory. Hardin made several attempts to escape. On February 14th, 1892, during his prison term, he was convicted of another manslaughter charge for the earlier shooting of J.B. Morgan and given a two-year sentence to be served concurrently with his expiring uh, 25-year sentence. Hardin eventually adopted prison life. While there, he read uh, theological books, became the superintendent of the prison Sunday school, and studied law. He was plagued by recur- uh, recurring poor health, especially when he was wounded, uh, became reinfected in 1883. This dude's a lunatic. Yeah. And He's he like was leading Sunday school. Now. I think he wants... He was bedridden for two years because uh, one of his old wounds just got reinfected. Yeah, that happens. Old wounds were like reopen and shit like that. It happens like a lot. People used to die. Soldiers especially used to die from that Ugh. quite a bit. Um is it like a control thing at this point? Like he just found the ways in prison that he could be in control? He became a man of God. Yeah. Mm, yeah, I guess. By and a lawyer. Like, just like uh, Gacy, you know? Yeah. And just like Dahmer. Everyone finds religion in prison. Yeah. Yeah. While in prison, his wife dies uh, on February 17th, 1894. Hardin was released from prison, having served 17 years of his 25-year sentence. Got out on good behavior. Also, it might just be, I will say this, uh, he is clearly very intelligent. Yeah. I think he's pretty smart. Knows how to play the game. Yeah. yeah. Like, he, he, I don't know that he's, like, he just sees patterns easily. Like, he sees what he needs to do, and he does it. He's a psychopath. Yeah. He's probably a classical one. You know, oh, like yeah. The, the, the charming psychopath in a way. Yeah. Like, yeah. So he gets released from prison, and he's only 40. Yeah. Well, right. He did He did all these things, like, under the age of 21, uh, basically. Yeah, 1890s 40 is probably, like, It's a hard 40. Now. It's a hard yeah. 40. Later that year, on March 16th, Hardin was pardoned, and on July 21st, he passed the state's bar examination. What was he pardoned? Yeah, pardon why, for what? Why why pardon him? I guess like they just allowed him to become a lawyer. He was pardoned to be a lo- oh, Jesus. Like don't you lose your rights when you go to prison? You're, Some, you're not depending bec- you're on not becoming a lawyer if you're going to prison for that. Yeah. After mm. it's not happening. Uh, now, it, now certainly 
Maybe, but like no, not maybe. You will not become a lawyer in any state if you've served time for murder. Okay, it's not fair. happening. Fair, fair, fair. But then, yeah, laws are kind of things. Then I don't know. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, you know, a, chi- a tiger can't change his stripes. Shortly after being released from prison, Hardin committed homicide when he made a five dollar bet that he could. At the first shot, knock a Mexican man off the soapbox on which the man was sunning himself, winning the bet and leaving the man dead from the fall, not the gunshot. Can you imagine you're at the beach and some guy walks up to you? There's like someone, uh, you know, sunning on the beach, and someone walks up and he's like, "Hey, I bet you five bucks I can kill him from here with this gun." That's what happened. What is even this yeah. bet? Who bet him? No, no know. one bet him. The he bet man? someone else. <laughs> I bet. What did, what did you? What Afterward, Hardin moved to El Paso, Texas. Didn't get arrested, of course. <laughs> No, it just moved. Just left. What is... the serial killer. It's How does he die? In El Paso lawman, John Selman Jr. arrested Hardin's acquaintance and part-time prostitute, uh, the widow M. Rose, uh, for having a gun in public. Hardin confronted Selman, and the two men argued. Uh, I I disagree with what you said. What? There's no such thing as a part-time prostitute. Oh, maybe he's like you're. You're only working for me now. So it's just, it's just a, if you are, it's it, still that you're a prostitute. What if she's only working twenty hours a week? I <laughs> doesn't matter. <laughs> well, no. If you're not working forty, you're part time. Yeah, if she's not getting benefits. Actually, you're full time. She's not getting health insurance. If you're a hooker. You're full time hooker. Mm. There's the unions, man. <laughs> <laughs> I just say I. And there's nothing wrong with it. By the way, the, we prostitution should be legalized in all fifty states. But like, if you're a hooker, you you're you're a hooker. Now, he ends up pistol whipping this cop, and then Constable John Summon Jr. or Senior, uh, himself a notorious gunman and former outlaw, approached Harden on the afternoon of August nineteenth, eighteen ninety five, and those two men exchanged. He did words. That night, Hardin went to the Acme Saloon, where he began to play dice. At this point, this is like a fucking Friday the 13th movie, where I'm like, how is he not dead? Kill him. His last words were, four sixes to beat. Shortly before midnight, Selman Sr. entered the saloon, walked up to Hardin from behind, and shot him in the back of the head, killing him instantly. Great. Thank you. God. Yeah. As Harden laid on the floor, Selman fired three more shots just in case. The old quadruple tap. You gotta, yeah. Yep. Gotta put more than one in there. Yeah. Harden was buried the following day in El Paso. They should have just left him in the street for vultures to pick his Kinda, body. Yeah. And just been like, this is what happens. This actually. is what this is what yeah. you deserve. Just take him out to a fucking field. Yeah. Selman Sr. was arrested for murder and stood trial. He claimed self-defense, which is sick. Uh, stating that he witnessed Hardin attempt to draw his pistol upon en- seeing him enter the saloon. Mur- at this point in Hardin's life, the act of murdering him is self-defense. I was about to say, if I see him in a room, I'm going to try. Like, you have to immediately kill him. Yeah. You can't be in a room with him. Because if you fucking sneeze, he might fucking murder you. Yeah. If you're not just standing like this the entire time. And even then, he might be like, hey, buddy. Your hand's been up for a long time. I don't like the way you're waving your hands around. <laughs> don't put them down. There was a hung jury uh, resulted in someone being released. Good. 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 And before he could be retried, though, he was killed in a shootout. Whatever. With U.S. Yeah. Marshal George I'm sure. Scarborough. I'm sure he's an April 6, 1896. Whatever. Uh, and then nearly a century later, uh, the family in 1995 argued over where to bury him. They wanted to dig him, dig him up. Who, Harden? Harden? Yeah. For what? Just to relocate him. For so what? Wait, what's your, what's your, what does your uh, squatter think? <sighs> well, she's a nice woman, first off, Rob. I, I understand that. And second off, uh, she doesn't really remember. She was too young. Okay, but she was there for the debate. Um, She just remembers her family kind of arguing with the other side of the family. Like, he doesn't belong in El Paso. Is he a fucking he, saint? Here, here's <laughs> an idea. Um, di- like you argue about popes and dig, artists dig, and shit. Dig him up and uh, use his coffin as a toilet. 
Yeah. For a hundred years. Okay. Yep. So here's the publisher. Uh, in 1925, his autobiography was published by Bandera publisher, historian and journalist J. Marvin Hunter, who founded both the Frontier Times magazine and the Frontier Times Museum. Mm. Okay. Cool. Sure. And uh, that is the story. You sure he didn't like fucking resurrect and kill six more people? Right. He just walked into a, his corpse. Just walked into a publishing house. No. Uh, there was in 2002 an auction house in San Francisco, California, that auctioned three lots of John Wesley Harden's personal effects, uh, containing a deck of his playing cards, oh. a deck of his the business cards, ones. yeah, and a contemporary newspaper account of his death. Sold for fifteen thousand dollars. The bullet that killed Harden sold for eighty thousand dollars. Nice. So That's that cool. is the story of John Wesley. Can Harden. you imagine they're like in San Francisco or whatever, like handling his shit, and the gun goes off, kills somebody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Harden gets one more. Yeah. So uh, what did you guys learn today? Fuck this guy. That's what I learned. Fuck uh, this guy. I think, um, legitimately, uh, there are a lot. I mean. This guy's known as an outlaw, but he is literally just a serial killer. Like, if you murder in the act of attempting to get something else, I don't necessarily consider that murder. Uh, you might still like it, but I can I don't consider that. You it's know not I mean? first like, degree. R- right, right. But this guy, well, th- even the stuff most of he did wasn't, like, first degree, but, like, this guy, first and foremost, all really all he was was a murder. So my, my what I learned is, is that... There's probably however many serial killers you think there are in American history. Double, triple it, probably. Mm. Way yeah. more. Yeah. Oh. 10x. Yeah. I mean, like, not even, like, the people that are not qualified but should be, but just, like, the amount of people that just were never found, too. Yep. Mm. There's so yep. many serial well, killers. Well, even this guy was found, and no yeah. one considers him a serial killer, but that's all he is as a serial killer. Yeah, he wore a cowboy hat. He cosplayed. Right. Yeah. It's like, oh, oh he's not really a serial killer. Look how he's dressed. Should I ask this? Who is Hitler today? It's it's this him. fucking asshole. It's Harden. It's the only guy. You did a you did a story on Hitler. Yeah. Wild West Hitler. You you just did rootin' tootin' Hitler. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh well, that's today's episode. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. Hopefully uh you had a good time. Hopefully you learned something. Not really. Just I I had never heard of this guy. Uh, he was actually recommended in our Discord. Okay. Um, which was funny because... How did you find the connection? How did you find... Were you just like, oh, I'm right about this person? Same Oh, uh, okay. And I'm like, hey, are you related to this dude? <laughs> right. She was like, actually, I am. Yeah, and because she's from West Texas. Too. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. This is a fun connection. But uh, yeah, make sure to check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash softcore history. Become a member of the Discord through the Patreon. And you also get two additional episodes every week. Uh, make sure to leave a five-star review on Apple and uh, a five-star review on Spotify. Leave a review on Apple if you can. We'll read those off uh, right now, actually. Uh, let's uh, go we have some a of bunch the, of good ones to read. Let's go through some reviews that we got this last week or two uh, that I really appreciate, of course. Rob does, too. Uh, someone just wrote a review on Jake Thursday does not know uh, saying right to jail uh, about Jesus' foreskin. Uh, yeah, well, that does get you right to Catholic jail. Uh, love the banter between hosts. The show is absolutely awesome. I've been listening for a while now. In fact, I'm a Patreon member. Keep up the good work, boys, and anyone who talks poorly about this podcast frequently kisses their dad on the lips. On a serious note, it's nice to see others in our generation love and history. Thank you for the educational episodes and hours of entertainment when I'm on the road. Have a great one. Don't run with scissors. Happy Independence Day. Uh, I really enjoyed uh, Softcore History, Hardcore Banter was the title of it. I don't remember what this is about, but this has to be a St. Louis who wrote this. Uh, came for the nonchalant history, but I stayed because of the in-depth banter. Yes. Uh, nowhere else can you get random stories of University City Parks countered by a rough outline of, legi- of legitimate historical events. Great product. University City is where I'm from in St. Louis. Mm-hmm. I don't remember what park I talked about. I assume getting drunk in or something as a yeah. as a high schooler. Sure. But shout out to Matty H forty four. And then last one I'll read: Fuzzy slash Logic. Every single episode they cover, or they rarely cover a topic I want to hear about. 
but after every episode I listen to, I'm happy I stopped by for a listen. Oh, the three of them are very entertaining together. Great work, boys. So you know that's just you all. That makes me happy because I always wonder, like, is this even? Are people like, oh man, what what is this topic like? As Doesn't long matter. as you, yeah, as long Doesn't as you're matter. enjoying it, we get you there. That's all that matters, baby. We appreciate you stopping by. Hopefully, we earned your business in the future. For Rob Fox and Jake Goldman, I'm Dan Regester, and you just got soft served.